Hi guys, back again with an update on um, mango. Yeah, one of you guys asked me on the um, latest from the mangoes that I have here in Melbourne during winter time, during um, August, which is uh, late winter. It's a mixed bag of um, news. The good news is this oldest variety I have here, which is um, almost six years old now, five to six years old, the Glen, is um, showing some new new growth, which is always welcome, right? Especially from um, mango in the colder time of the year. So that's a very good sign. It's not spectacular, but um, here in Melbourne, anything that grows, anything tropical, that can grow in um, in um, winter is spectacular uh, for anyone that's not from around here. So wherever I point the camera, it's sort of um, showing a good um, growth pattern at um, almost every point, almost. Let's have a look. Yeah, just about every point. So I'm pretty happy with that. This is the Glen, as I said, G-L-E-N-N. -N. And it's in ground. Yep, it's in ground. I don't know how it's gonna stand in the years to come with this um, bend at the bottom. See that? The way it's trained itself. Because what happened a couple of years ago, I had a stick here, a wooden stick, and it snapped. I don't know if you guys remember that. And uh, the whole tree fell on the ground. It was literally here on the ground, literally. But uh, it didn't crack. The trunk did not crack, guys. So. These things seem to be made out of rubber, these mango trees. It was like this was made of rubber. It didn't crack, it bent. And that bend looks like um, one of its um, permanent features now. So I don't know what that's gonna, um, um, how it's gonna affect the tree in the, in the future. Because if I pull out this metal, steel picket um, I think the tree will just collapse so I'm not gonna do that for a while yeah so that's that that's the Glen it's not going anywhere with that steel post it's not even budging even when we have horrendous winds the tree is rock solid with that um, post The next mango is um, a Kensington Pride, which um, died, and the root rootstock took over. So this is the rootstock, and um, I've had it for about uh, three years as a rootstock, and it's not doing much. But I don't want to sort of get rid of it. I just put it in the ground here last year, exactly 12 months ago. It didn't grow at all during summer, last summer. It sort of just stayed there, it just stayed alive. And it looks like it stayed alive over winter, no problem. I'm guessing it's a, um, what do you call it? Um, the, the rootstock is a, mm, what's the word for it again? Bowen, that's what I'm trying to, trying to say here, Bowen. And uh, I just noticed this new growth here on the tip, guys. That's great. Just saw it now. Let's have a look. Where are we? It's good news. Yay. It's waking up. Hopefully, it'll do a lot better this spring than it did last year. So, 
some activity here. Well, there has to be some activity because it's um, early spring. Yeah, so that's um, not much else to say about this. I have it here on the ground also. Right? Up against the, uh, the side fence in the front. The next mango is this one here which I also put in the ground uh, 12 months ago, last August. This was a purchase from Dailies and uh, it didn't do well at all. It suffered over spring. I don't know if it's because I planted it too early, late winter. It was a late winter planting, right? So instead of doing something in spring and summer, it went backwards. I lost the main um, branch, the leader at the top. This one, it died back within a couple of months of planting it in the ground. So that wasn't nice. That wasn't nice at all. But this side shoot, right, that one took off. So that was some, some uh, relief that it didn't just stop altogether. So we got this. Only that. See that? Only that. For the last 12 months. That's it. And looks like it's also waking up. It's always good to see this guys. It's a very good sign in late winter to see an in-ground mango come through winter and then say hey I made it and I'm ready for uh, mango business. That's an excellent sign. So yeah, they're slow. They're slow in Melbourne. The, you're better off planting and growing these in pots. I found that out now, after all these years. Because in the ground, they will work, but they're gonna take twice as long. So instead of taking um, three to five years to get success in the ground, um, it'll take six to eight years yeah so just be aware of that i'm talking about cool to warm temperate climate I'm not talking about the tropics so if you're in queensland this does not apply to you and the variety here guys r2e2 grafted so that's the third one i have in the ground whilst we're waiting for a big black cloud to pass over I'll show you the temperature outdoors this is uh, underneath the ice cream bean this looks like 17 yeah 17 even not bad that's around 62 63 Fahrenheit yep in the shade of the ice cream bean okay the next uh, in-ground mango is this one which I also planted at the end of last winter exactly 12 months ago it actually did really well considering that I planted it at the end of winter and uh, it didn't have any um, sun protection in summer when we had 110 Fahrenheit no protection at all from the sun no protection from the cold now in winter it was actually even actively growing right up till June which is early winter up till a couple of months ago and now in um, July August it sort of uh, went into this funky oh I need a break kind of look see how it's all got the cold burn see that right it didn't have anything like this for um, 10 months this just came um, in July yeah so about a month ago it started um, giving us this funky look yeah 
other than that, it's looking okay. Um, I can make out some kind of new activity right hang on how am I gonna do this where are we yeah right in there hang on right okay hang on get this over there well it's hard to make out but in there there we are got it or is that just my imagination I think I saw something green in there whoops Hang on, let me go into this. No, it was a cobweb. Is that a cobweb? Or green? Hmm. Ah, it's cobweb. Okay. So anyhow, this is the Parvin. The Parvin variety, which I know nothing about. And it's written that way so yeah and the parvin was also grafted okay this is the fifth mango in ground it's been in the ground now for um, a year and a half, or just over a year and a half, around uh, 16, 17 months. It's a uh, grafted Kensington Pride. It just completed its second winter in the ground, and I reckon it's looking pretty good for. Um, putting up with two winters unprotected in the ground right I would give it a, a high mark and instead of um, freaking out on me like they usually do in winter it's um, just like the Glen showing some activity well it's trying to but uh, See so here in uh, winter, we get one week beautiful weather like today, between 15 and 18 Celsius, right? And sunny, like I'm in my, well, just like yesterday, I'm in my uh, summer clothes. I'm dressed for summer. I'm not dressed for winter. Okay, so one week is summer or spring-like, and the following week, guys, guess what happens? It hits rock bottom. It hits rock bottom, and that's why these green tips that are trying to be green turn black again. It's a very confusing time of the year for tropical trees in Melbourne right it's like they get a green light green light and then the next week they get a red light stop up oh, come back come back it's not over winter is not over look see these um, new um, points that are trying to come hang on look see this now, if I was in um, Queensland, these one, two, three guys wouldn't be just sticking their head out of the out of the bed sheets and and looking. They would actually be growing instead of wasting time waiting for the weather to um, warm up. They would be growing. So here in Melbourne, they're not taking that chance because after today, guess what's going to happen here in Melbourne? after our 10 day run of beautiful winter weather it's gonna snow not in Melbourne but on the outskirts of Melbourne it's gonna snow guys we're gonna get hail 
and snow and a lot of rain and cold wind so that's why the mango instinctively says nope I'm gonna stay put under the bed cover under the sheets and wait so the more we wait the more time is lost in growth and that wasted time is where in the tropics the trees grow and here they don't you see that's the difference but if you have these in a pot in a greenhouse or in your house in a bright room you won't have that problem so that's why it's better to grow these um, in a pot so you can take it in over winter and bring it out in spring and summer and there's gypsum and compost that I gave him a few days ago just waiting for the rain now that's coming and there's all the kiwi fruit vines that I cut and I just let them rot there and then spread them around that's the uh, cherry moya number two which is also waking up didn't get any fruit from this this year but uh, I noticed it's got uh, not only new growth where was it I noticed it had um, Wow look at this flowers coming for um, summer look at that on a cherry moya amazing see the difference and these two trees are right next to each other the mango and the cherry moya see different families of tropical trees one is um, freezing and the other one saying wow nice weather today different perspective both tropical okay let's have a look at the uh, potted mango that I have here in the greenhouse these guys here I showed you all the in-ground and these are the ones in pots let's have a look at the temperature here in the tropics of um, Melbourne what does it say 20 23 mm, 23 Celsius in the greenhouse not bad not bad 17 outside that's a six degree difference and this greenhouse is unheated no heaters just just the warm sunshine okay so I'm not gonna go over these mangoes right now because this video was mainly for the um, the ones in ground but I can tell you there's a lot of um, new activity coming on all three of them there's three potted mangoes here Let's see if I can point in there right new growth that's the quan mango and then I've got a uh, Alfonso right which is also showing some new growth here right there wakey wakey and then I've got a Kensington pride seedling which seems to be also um, waking up slowly 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 all right guys that's it for this video I hope that answers the question of how the mangoes did over um, winter here in um, in Melbourne at Fruitopia and um, I reckon they've done quite well I'm gonna be bringing these mangoes out soon because they can really easily take um, winter here as you saw with the in-ground ones and um, well not as <laughs> look at this look at compare that with that right look right big difference so mangoes are tough compared to um, some of the other ones thanks for watching guys um, please like and comment with your experiences with your mangoes over winter and uh, subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you from the next video